y'all. Coach in the fight here. You got Stacy with me. Shalom. And in today's class, we're going into part two of our mini series on the Shepherd of Hermas Visions, chapter three. Okay. If you haven't tuned in to the first portion of this class, we suggest that you do so after you watch this one. It gives a good introduction on what's going on in this class as well as this book that we are coming out of called The Shepherd of Hermas. But in this class, we're going to be looking at these stones that's going to be making up this tower-shaped temple. But before we jump over there, I wanted to share some verses with you guys that supports this, what we are about to hear from. The first verse is going to come out of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Okay, now first of all, we are being told here that we are the temple. There's a lot of talk about the third temple. Um, there's some who believe that it will be a brick and mortar temple. But we have to understand that that temple... The Father's temple will not be made of brick and mortar, but it will be a spiritual temple made up of us. Yes. All right. Now, for the next verse that I want you to read, I want you to jump over on to 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 5. Because now that we recognize that we are going to be this temple, we want to see how Peter says how we will be fitted in this temple. First Peter 2 and 5. Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Okay, now so we hear here Peter also talking about this spiritual temple. He calls it the spiritual house. But notice how he says there that we are lively stones. Mm -hmm. In some translation, it says living stones. We okay. are living stones. Yeah, that's, I understand that better. Yeah. Yeah. And so we're living stones which are used to build up this spiritual temple or the third temple. Mm -hmm. But notice right there how it says a holy priesthood. Yeah. You know, that's talking to the 144,000 who will all be priests. Yeah, we have to remember that the word holy means set apart. Oh, uh, yes, that's right. Holy means set apart. You're absolutely right. But then notice right again the word priesthood there. I don't yes. think we've ever talked about that in too much detail that the 144,000 will be in fact priests. Yes. They will be teachers of the law. Their mm -hmm. primary responsibility will be to teach the rest of us the law so that we will be able to survive the tribulation and be able to live in the kingdom of heaven. To offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Now that spiritual sacrifices, you know, that always reminds me of what we read over in Malachi chapter 3 and verse 3. Where he's talking about the new covenant and how he's going to send us an angel of the covenant. But down there in verse 3 he says, and he shall sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. And he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer unto the Lord an offering of righteousness. Mm -hmm. So this again is pointing to the priesthood. Yes. Especially when you see right there where it says Levi. Yeah. Of course, you have to go through a Levi period for, you know, a number of years before you're eligible to become a priest. Mm hmm. Now, today's study, of course, is coming out of the Shepherd of Hermas, but I want to show you over here from Wikipedia and their article on the Shepherd of Hermas. It says that the Shepherd of Hermas was once considered a valuable book by many Christians and considered canonical scripture by some of the early church fathers, such as Arrhenius. So, like I talked about in the other class, this book was once included in our Bibles. Mm -hmm. If you go back and look at the Codex Sinaiticus, you'll find the Shepherd of Hermas listed between a book called the Acts of the Apostles and the Acts of Paul. Wow. I didn't know that. 
Mm-hmm. I thought it was just a set of books that were, you know, placed in the back. But yeah, but we find that the Shepherd of Firmness was listed right after the Book of Acts. Wow. <laughs> it shows the importance of this book. Mm-hmm. It was actually Hermes came before Paul. Think about that for a second. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Wow. Well, anyway, we're going to jump over to the Shepherd of Hermes. Now, I'm looking at another uh, website here called wikisource.org. And this is a place where we can actually get a free copy of the Shepherd of Hermes, the William Wake edition, which is in the Lost Books of the Bible and the Forgotten Books of Eden. And we're going to be looking in the first book called Visions. And we're going to jump all the way down to which verse, Stace? Verse number 22. Verse number 22. Again, this is the second part in this series. We covered the first 21 verses in the first part of this series. But in this class, we're going to get the vision from the lady, right? Mm-hmm. Yep, and this is Visions 3. Um, maybe we need to give them just a little more detail on what they're about to hear. Um, okay. Well, in the first part, we had a communication between Hermes and the church, who Hermes was seeing in the form of a vision or a dream. She led Hermes out to the field where he could be alone and promised to show him a vision of how the third temple will be built on the hearts of humanity, how that temple made out of stones will be put together by six venerable angels. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in here, we actually start to see or start to hear how that temple is being constructed. What what are they doing with these stones who we know that we are? Yes. All right. So let's go ahead and let's jump right into it. Vision 3, verse 22. Wherefore, falling down before her feet, I began to entreat her for the Lord's sake, that she would show me the vision which she had promised. Again, so Hermes is is trying to get her to show him this vision. This is what this entire chapter is about, is this vision that Hermes is about to see. And again, it is a vision of the third temple and the stones that are making up this temple. Yeah, when we last left off... Um, in the previous class, she had given Hermes some information, but it wasn't enough to satisfy his hunger uh, for what he needed to know. So now he's falling before her and asking her for a, I guess you would say, a complete revelation. Yeah, she's wanting to, he's wanting to see this thing in detail. Um, she was kind of vague before, but, you know, it wasn't enough for him to go by. Mm-hmm. 23. Then she again took me by the hand and lifted me up and made me sit up on the seat on the left side. And holding up a certain wand said unto me, Seest thou the great thing? I replied, Lady, I see nothing. Okay, so we remember that this is a vision. This is kind of a dream that Hermes is about to see here that's given to him from the church. Yeah, Mm mm-hmm. So they're out here in the field and they're sitting on this bench that has a linen pillow and is covered in linen. And they're in a secluded spot like we talked about in the last class. If we want to um, commune with the Father, if we want to hear from Him directly, one of the things that we could do in our best interest is to find ourselves in a secluded spot, preferably in a spot that is natural, a natural spot opposed to like a building or a room or anything like that. We'd rather be looking at trees and grass instead of concrete and buildings. Yeah, the Father wants us to communicate where our spirit wants to communicate to the Father. And the only way that I know of that our spirit communicates to the Father is through prayer. And so, you know, to do that in a natural environment where we can see the things that are part of the Father, that He's in these leaves and trees and dirt and birds, um, it just makes you feel like you have a one-on-one connection with Him. Yeah, you actually do. Yeah, because He is in everything that He has created. So being in touch with nature is also being in touch with our Creator. Yeah. Okay. 24. 
She answered, Doeth thou not see over against thee a great tower, which is built upon the water with bright square stones? Okay, so she had to shake Hermes up a little bit. Maybe he was trying to see it with his material eyes, and she directed him to see it more so with his spiritual eyes here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what is the significance of the tower being built up on water? Um, he's going to go into detail here about this. Matter of fact, if you jump down to verse 41, when she's starting to give the explanations of this vision, you'll see her talk about this water. Now, we'll cover this in more detail um, in the next class or the class where we cover verse 41. But what she tells Hermes is that the tower is built upon the water because our lives is saved by water. Yeah, I remember that. Yes, it seems as if she's explaining it bit by bit as if, and I, I thank Hermes that he does continue to ask her to explain it to him more, give me more, give me more, give me more, simplify it, so she explains every little detail. Hermes is extremely humble, you know, which is important to, you know, this type of learning, you know, if, if, if he wasn't. You know, he would have assumed that he understood everything yeah. mm -hmm. and, you know, we wouldn't have got anything out of it. Right. You know, but, you know, it's like this water here, we're going to find out that it's referring to baptism. Mm -hmm. Yes. And how baptism is important to our salvation. Um, I can't remember exactly which verse it is over in the New Testament, but it says that we have to be baptized in order to be saved. And it's not necessarily talking about that saved that we think about when we think about that place we go to when we die, saved from the lake of fire. The baptism that he's talking about here is referring to the kingdom of heaven. If we ever want to see the kingdom of heaven, we're going to have to be baptized by the water and by the spirit. Right. Mm -hmm. But anyway, let's go on. 25. For the tower was built upon a square by these six young men that came with her. So, like we, we, we heard about these six young men in the previous uh, class, these are angels that he's talking about. These angels are in charge of building up humanity, of assisting humanity. Each one of them has a particular role to play. Like Gabriel, he's over our dreams and understanding of dreams and stuff like that. Michael, he is the lawgiver. We're going to hear about him in this class. Uh, Uriel, um, he's actually, we're going to hear a lot from him in this class. He's a, the angel over our repentance. But you also have other angels like Raphael, who is over healing, and some others that I can't really name right off the top of my head. But these are talking about the big angels. And then we're going to see these other, what is verse 26 says, you have the lower level angels, which there will be thousands of them. Yeah, those would be, um, I guess you would consider like your guardian angel and different angels like that. But the six have the responsibility of building the tower. Yeah, they have to. Yeah, they they are like cherubim or seraphim or anything like that. But the when we think of angels like the angels you see in the movies with wings that kind of look humanoid and stuff, those are the lowest class of angels. They would be considered watchers. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're closest to humans, but they have the lowest rank among any of the other angels. But, you know, they are playing a very important part in the right. building of this tower. Mm -hmm. And so we can see their role as they are the ones who are carrying these stones. Yeah. 26. But many thousands of other men bought stones. Some drew them out of the deep. Others carried them from the ground and gave them to the six young men, and they took them and built. So now we want to, you know, expound on this. This this book is full of mystery, as you can see already. But, you know, we're not really trying to hold anything from you. So we're just going to blurt stuff out from, you know, that we understand from all over the book. Yeah. Like when it's talking about here that some came out of the deep. It's talking about came out of the deep water. These are 
people that have gone on and deceased people we would think about like the apostles the patriarchs mm -hmm. the uh, the prophets of old they are the ones that are coming out of the deep and then the ones who are carried from the dry land those are us those are like modern day people people right. that may even still be alive mm -hmm. but both will actually make up this tower yeah mm -hmm. you know you have the foundations who will be on the, the prophets and on the patriarchs and on the apostles but you know we will be atop of this tower yeah 27. As for those stones which were drawn out of the deep, they put them all into the building, for they were polished, and their squares exactly answered one another. And so were ones who joined in such wise to the other, that there was no space to be seen where they joined, insomuch that the whole tower appeared to be built as it were of one stone. And guys, you know, we we don't plan, you know, we don't claim to be know-it-alls, but you know, between Stacy and myself, we probably read this book probably two hundred times. We you read say? it quite a bit. As this includes audio as well. And yeah, all the way back to the year nineteen ninety-eight. You know, like I said, about two hundred times we've actually gone through this book. Even even last night, you know, I popped on the audio before I went to bed and pretty much dreamed about this book all night long as it sat there and played while I was asleep. And we say that, you know, we say, you know, that we've been through this book many, many times. We don't say it to be arrogant or anything like that. We say that to, you know, you think about the scripture, study to show yourself approved. So we're saying we do the Father has given us some revelation on this book, and we're just wanting to share it with you. But it's not out of arrogance or anything like that. Like, for instance, this one right here, where it's talking about how these individuals that were brought, these stones that were brought from the deep, were put immediately into the building because they were polished and square and exact already. Mm -hmm. You know, this is actually talking about reincarnation. I believe that, yes. Not only is it talking about reincarnation, but it's also pointing to how the ministers of old, the Abrahams, the Isaacs, and the Jacobs, and the Moseses, they didn't have to be reincarnated over and over. Right. You know, re reincarnation is actually a gift from our Father to give us more opportunities to learn His laws and to complete our charitable mission. He gives us reincarnation for our benefit. For our striving for the kingdom. Reincarnation actually used to be a part of our Bible. When you read in the scripture, uh, you would find the word reincarnation. But we also learned that it was taken out in the year 555 AD. About 500 years after the Messiah, the church officials condemned reincarnation and even went as far as to have the words removed out of the Bible and replaced with resurrection. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But reincarnation just, I mean, it just makes sense. Yeah, when you think about it, it makes perfect it makes sense. It makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. But anyway, like we're talking about over here, these individuals that came out of the deep, they didn't have to be reincarnated. You remember the Messiah when he went into the grave. We we're told that he went into the underworld where he got people like Abraham and Isaac and Jacob out of it. They were in paradise and he brought them out. Mm -hmm. They were in paradise because there was no need for them to have been reincarnated. So they were just waiting for the Messiah to come and get them. Yeah. And when he got them, look what he did with them. He made them the foundations of this tower. Yeah, great spirits. Those were the great spirits. Like, and he, they, they now stand as the foundation, whereas the rest of us, these stones that weren't so good, of course, we had to come back and learn our lessons. But thank the Father, we will have the opportunity to go in this tower as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. It's a blessing um, to be re incarnated yeah because yeah. mm -hmm. if it wasn't for reincarnation you know all the bad people will go straight to hell mm -hmm. but yeah. notice there where it says uh they were joined in so much that the whole tower appeared to be built as it were one stone yeah this is talking about how their message was consistent it didn't matter who you was listening to whether mm -hmm. you was listening to moses whether you was listening to elijah samuel yeah. anybody mm -hmm. you listened to they all had the exact same message unlike today 
Yeah. Where, you know, everybody's talking about whatever. Mm -hmm. The most popular ministers are the ones that are good at making up stuff. Yeah. Well, our message today is not consistent at all. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, you know, if you if you looked at if, if, if all of our stones were allowed to go in there like these were not being polished, our tower would look pretty raggedy. Yeah, it would look pretty raggedy with all kind of clefts. Broken off stones, round ones, white ones, black ones, all color, and you know it's just be an array of just it, it, yeah, and it fall down craziness. too. <laughs> it, cr it crumbles. Yeah. <laughs> all right, let's go on. Twenty-eight. But as for the other stones that were taken off from the ground, some of them they rejected, others they fitted into the building. So here we're learning this lesson that some of our stones, unlike those guys will be rejected because like you said they're of all different colors shapes qualities and mm -hmm. everything yeah mm -hmm. but you notice here how we're saying some of them are rejected but some of them are allowed to go into the building yeah mm -hmm. all right 29 as for those which were rejected some they cut out and cast them at a distance from the tower but many others of them lay round about the tower, which they made no use of in the building. So you have three different stones here. And we, we understand that every human, every person that has a spirit in them has a stone. Mm -hmm. Our spirit is the stone. Yeah. But when we're thinking about all of humanity, it should be really easy to understand that not all of these stones are fit to go into this tower. Right. Right. And so you see right here that some of them were cut out of the tower and cast at a distance from the tower. Mm -hmm. These are the people that have no chance of really making it into this tower at this point. Right. While others of them lay around about the tower, whereas they cut them out. But they just set them down near the tower. Mm -hmm. It's because at some point the chiseling process will take on and they're going to grab some of these stones that ain't too bad and that they can fix. And they're going to fix those stones and then they're going to put them back in the tower. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're going to chip away at the bad spots. Right. Mm -hmm. There's no use for them now in the building of the tower. But once they are shaped up, then there will be a place for them. And the shaping up usually or will come at a price of um, trouble, so yep. trials, yep. tribulation, yep. things of that nature. Yeah, Yeah, because like it says over there in Acts that nobody will enter the kingdom of heaven without tribulation. Mm -hmm. Tribulation is necessary. And understanding Jacob's trouble, it is that tribulation that's going to transform Jacob into Israel. Right. And... Speaking spiritually, it's what happened with the um, with Jacob as in his human form. Yeah. Um, it's what changed him into his Israel as well. You you're right about that. Thirty. For some of these were rough, others had clefts in them, others were white and round, not proper for the building of the tower. So these are the ones that were um, taken out of the tower and set beside the tower. Mm -hmm. Now these aren't the ones that was kicked far off. Right. This is only talking about the white and round stones, mm -hmm. which we'll find out later on that these are the stones who, although are have a certain level of righteousness, they're still caught up in the world. That makes me think of the majority of people here in America. Yeah. Because we are such a materialistic nation. Yeah. Though we are, you know, we we believe in the Father and things of that nature. We, you know, say we love Him, but yet and still, materialism has a deep grasp you know on us so we're going to church five and six times a week but we're riding in our lexus and we're not going to dare to show up without our gucci purse and our makeup on yeah i see they even got gucci mask now yeah. <laughs> that's definitely pretty round there <laughs> and the white part points to the fact that you know they are righteous opposed to you know being an off color and having stains in them you know, which would point to certain levels of wickedness. Well, you know, a lot of people are going to say down in the comments, I believe, maybe not your subscribers, but you're going to have those that say, what's wrong with having, are y'all against us having nice things? You know, maybe they say, because you don't have this, are you against me having it? And that's not what we're saying. We're saying that, you know, material, there's nothing wrong with having the Lexus. 
I would say, and this is so cliche, just don't let the Lexus have you. <laughs> That's an excellent point. So let's jump down to verse 67 at risk of getting a little bit ahead, ahead of ourselves. And let's briefly talk about these white and round stones. Because Herman asks him specifically, or he asks her, who are these white and round stones that are not proper for the building of the tower? So we're still in Visions, Visions 3, but we're going to jump down to verse 69. And 69 says, They are such as has faith indeed, but have with all the riches of this present world. When therefore any troubles arise for the sake of their riches and traffic, they deny the Lord. Right. So now this, like we said, this, this, these wealth, these worldly possessions is actually interfering with their relationship with the father because they're willing to protect their stuff opposed to standing up for the faith. Some of them going as far as denying the father altogether mm -hmm. in order to keep their stuff. Yeah, and you in the last class, the previous class before this, we gave some good examples of how it not only happened to us, but how it happens to people um, all over the world. It's just that something about that money, that something about those materialistic things that that you know, though we would like to say they don't, but they do put a a line between you and the father. And you mentioned earlier how you know. People may question whether or not we want to separate them from their stuff. It ain't that we want to separate them from their stuff. We just understand that it is necessary for their spiritual evolution. Mm -hmm. Like, for instance, read verse 70, and then we'll jump back over to this study. Okay. I answering said unto her, When therefore will they be profitable to the Lord? When their riches shall be cut away, say she, in which they take the light. Then they will be profitable unto the Lord for his building. So their riches will be taken away. And this is what I try to remind people of when they are um, asking me, you know, whether it's good for them to have material possessions and all of this. You know, one day that stuff is going to go away. And if you are dependent on it, it's going to harm you. Um, so if the father tries to remove you or separate you from that stuff now, you should really let him and okay. not try to go against his will and try to undo the work that he has done. If you don't, you'll find yourself in the bucket with the rest of the 7.5 billion people on the planet where they're all going to lose their material possessions all at once. Yeah, I'm just going to say this, and I, I did mention it before in the last class, how I wanted, uh, when we, you know, when you made the decision that our family would walk away from um, living in the materialistic world. I wanted those uh, materialistic things back. I wanted my house back. I wanted my, my vehicles back. I wanted, you know, being able to shop at nice stores back. I wanted all that stuff but, back. But I'm so thankful to the Father that you were headstrong enough to say, no, we're going to follow this path. And, and today, I see the reward and the benefits of it. Well, you think about, you know, how... You are now in a humbled lifestyle compared to then. Think about this pandemic and how so many people have lost their incomes and lost their jobs, how we will be struggling now to pay for all of that stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yes. we can actually already see the Father's will and His plan to actually put us in a position where, you know, pretty much this pandemic hasn't affected us not at much, all. Not you know? much has changed, yeah. Not, not much has changed at all. Mm -hmm. And we give our Father all praise and honor for his plan first of all and then allowing us to have the opportunity to do this in the first place but anyway let's go on 31 but I saw the other stones cast afar off from the tower and falling into the highway and yet not continuing in the way but were rolled from the way into a desert place and so here is another group of people. The other ones, like we said, those who had clefts, those that were white and round, those that had minor flaws that could be changed were set beside the tower. But these individuals, they're thrown far away from the tower. Some will find out was even put in the fire and burned up. Mm -hmm. What does it mean by and falling into the highway? It says and falling into the highway 
and still not continually in the way, but were rolled from the way into a desert place. These are people who are allowed to go off track. You know, they, when it talks about them going into the desert place, that's when they've gone as far as to uh, reject the scripture and try to find their own path in life. Right. You see people who, even though they are believers, they don't believe in the word of God. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they, you know, will say negative things toward the scripture like, oh, that's man-made stuff, this and man-made writings, that. And they have no faith in the scripture. Well, those people are allowed, those people are put out into the highway area, some of which will fall away, even off the highway, into these desert places to be by themselves. Yeah, before internet and YouTube, I never knew these people existed. But, you know, seems like they're coming out of the woodwork now. Yeah. They're all over the place. Yeah, all and the even trying to convince you that, you know, that you're wrong. Yeah, yeah, you're right, you know. We, we, it's like playing whack-a-mole every time we do a video, you know, right. we got these people that pop up and you got to, you know, tamp them down and say, you know, not everybody has Gentile ambitions. Mm -hmm. Not everybody's planning on flying away. The promises of the Bible is inheritance of the earth. And in order to have this earth as an inheritance, we have to live a different lifestyle. Right. You know, we can't, we don't necessarily have the luxury of the law of liberty. Right. Mm -hmm. You know. Those that, you know, want this earth, want to be the new Noah's going forward, those that want to be in this priesthood, they got to obey the laws. Right. You know, they got to obey the rules. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what kind of kingdom there would be if the king had no rules? He like the one we're in right now. Look at look right. at the way the world is now. Do whatever yeah. you want, whenever you want to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Number 32. Others I saw falling into the fire and burning. Others fell near the water, yet could not roll themselves into it, though very desires to fall into the water. Now, like we said, you know, we're going to continue this study and we're going to get into detail as to what these stones are. In the meantime, you guys can jump over and look at the class we did on Similitudes 9, particularly because it's the same story, yeah. but it's not given in the form of a vision. You know, Hermes is giving more detail about what's going on here. Um, so you guys can check that out or you could go read the book for yourself. And I would suggest you do read the book for yourself because it will give you more detail on this. But, you know, here we're talking about these people who are, you know, gone into the fire and burning. This would be the blasphemous people. Yeah. The people who have absolutely no chance of making it into the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. No matter when that rock falls on their head and they start to repent, they, they still, their repentance even then won't be acceptable. They're mm -hmm. still not going to make it. Right. Mm -hmm. And then, lastly, it's talking about these ones who... Who fell near the water and could not roll themselves into the water, though they were desirous to fall into the water? Yeah, what does that say? That's pointing to, like we talked about earlier, how our lives are saved by water. It's talking about the same baptism. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, how these people who, when given the opportunity to get baptized, will reject that opportunity because they would... Um, rather have their sinful lives yeah mm -hmm. they rather continue uh to be materialistic and you know they say things like oh, i'll do that later or something yeah. like that you know or that's not necessary yeah mm -hmm. yeah a lot of ministers even talk against baptism but you know they're equated to the dogs that sleep in the crib with the cattle mm -hmm. yeah. you know you got a bunch of hay in there that the dogs don't want to eat and they won't let the cattle eat either. They right. sit there and bark at them and won't let them eat either. Yeah, they even crap on the cat on the case. So you yeah, sleep sleeping on them or something like that. You know, yeah. that's that's what they're doing <laughs> when they tell you that you don't need to be baptized because they're essentially preventing us from going into the kingdom of heaven yeah. if we listen to them. Yeah. But anyway, that's going to wrap it up for this class and all we wanted to cover out of this one. Mm-hmm. And the next class is coming up. We'll start on verse 31. and no, verse 33. On verse 33. And we have a couple of more sections before we finish out this entire chapter. Lord willing, verse by verse, we'll finish this up. And we'll add this to the other classes that we have up. And it would actually complete the book called The Shepherd of Hermits. Yeah, it's great to be able to have 
in one um one i guess channel where you can do and follow along through the whole book yeah this will be the last installment we have covered uh the other three chapters out of the book called visions and we have done verse by verse out of every chapter in the second book called commands and even the last chapter called similitudes uh, similitude nine took us 13 classes to complete yeah and you guys we can see by doing these videos and we can see the difference that the book of hermits has made in our lives so yeah it will it will um it and will help you. It is a ministry you learn in the Shepherd of Hermas that Hermas was told to actually teach this. We have gotten the same instructions to go out once we understand Hermas to go out and teach the Shepherd of Hermas. So many of you guys should actually consider your Shepherd of Hermas ministry as well. And be sure to send me a link to it. Mm -hmm. And we'll follow along with you. Well, with that, we'll say if you got anything out of this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button, but leave us a comment either way. And shalom. Shalom.